Hello and welcome again to my studio. Today I'd like to talk to you about getting into the flow. What I see is the main problem whenever we paint any subject. As you know, in brush painting, we don't do an initial sketch and it's best if we don't go over any of the strokes. The aim is to paint as rapidly as possible, but we really can't do this if we don't know what our subject is, how it's constructed. Let me explain this a bit further. If we look at a um, ballet dancer or a concert pianist, we forget about the hours and hours that they spent in practice. And it was in practice of repetition, in going over the steps or in going over the notes until they had it so locked in that they could work freely. And that's called being in the flow. So let's look first at a simple flower such as the poppy. And what we want to understand first is that it's basically a U shape, like so. So each stroke that we do will be placed higher than the preceding stroke. And I'll demonstrate this. What happens many times because we haven't got this locked into our brain. Instead of shaping it like this, I can, let's make a happy face. I'm sorry, I can't resist. Okay, instead of shaping it like that, we line up all the strokes next to each other. All right, let me show you the correct way. So this is already the leaf stroke that I told you about last time. Remember, it's landing the brush, pushing upward and then pulling back into the stroke. All right, so that would be the first stroke. Then the next one would have to come up higher. Remember this diagram. So the next stroke would be adjacent to it, but higher like so. And then if we did another, it would be higher again, tip here and push up and out. And then on the other side, you would repeat the process. So tip, press, and pull back in. Tip, press, and pull back in. And the tip is here. You press and pull back in. And so you see we have our basic shape for the poppy. Then on the top, we have the inside of the flower and that you can either do that in the same manner or you can land the brush here and just drag the tip along like so. And we already did that last time with our turning leaf. Press and drag, okay, like so. And then in the center, I'd wait just a little bit for it to dry down, you don't want this area to bleed, and then you would fill in this area with your deeper color. Okay, so just rapidly I'm going to fill that in. Like so. Okay, so now what have we learned here? That we're trying to understand where the flower connects, which would be right here. That would be the center of the flower. So everything should connect at that point. So each one of these strokes should appear to connect here, right there. Okay, so each one of these should follow a path to connect to that center. Okay, like so. And even the ones at the top should appear to connect appearing to connect to here, all right? All right, now, it takes our brain a little while to understand this well enough so that we can paint the poppy rapidly without really thinking about it. And as I say, sometimes in the beginning, what I see students doing is they will line up all the strokes kind of like that, okay? Which is fine and that looks fine, but it's, it's not really the way a poppy is formed, okay? So, 
How do we get to Carnegie Hall? We have to practice this over and over again until we understand this is the basic shape and that all of our strokes have got to meet right here. They've got to meet there. They have to appear to meet there. What do I mean by that? If this is home base, sometimes a student will do something that's kind of, let me see if I can do it, kind of like that. Well, logically, if we follow those two strokes, where are they connecting? They're connecting to another home base and not to here. So what we've observed in painting the poppy is to have an understanding where all the petals of any flower connect where home base is. So let's do that poppy again. Tip is here, press up and pull back. Tip, press up and pull back, and then repeat it again. And I'm working from a reservoir of pale tone. It's better to work from a reservoir so you don't have to continually mix your color. You want all the tones to be somewhat the same. So now on the other side, it's tip, press and pull back, tip, press and pull back, and maybe, uh, I'm going to put one more over here. Okay, so what do I have here? I have the beginning of a poppy. Notice how all of my strokes appear to connect right here. That's the center of the flower. That's also where the stem would connect to the flower. So I'm going to turn this into a peony. And I do that by tip of the brushes here, press down and flick back up, and alongside of it, press down and flick up, press down and flick up. And I'm going to be repeating this basic group of three petals over and over again, because the peony does have a lot of petals. So in between these two areas of tone, I'm going to press down and then next to it, and then next to that again, all right? And then if you'll notice, I do rinse my brush a lot because I'm my aim is I'm trying to keep this water base at the end of the stroke. And that can diminish if you don't continually reload your brush. Okay, so I'm going into this area. I'm going to press down and then press down and press down. Okay, so that's my first layer, and if you've had the opportunity to observe peonies, you know they have many, many layers. What I would recommend to you is Google flowers and see all the variations of flowers, uh, the different colors. This will help you a lot, and it will also help your brain to log in all this information. Okay, now we're going into the V-shapes that have been created. All right, so in here, I'm going to press down and then press down and going in here, press down and then press down, maybe do a little stroke there, rinse my brush, and going into this area. And this for me, again, remember from last time, I'm crossing over my body, so this is more of a blind stroke, whoops, whoops, for me. Uh, this is a positive for me going in this direction. Okay, so let's go into that V, press down, press down, press down. And what I want you to do is keep all your strokes very close together. Uh, one thing that I notice when people are first beginning to paint the peony is they tend to have too much space in between, okay? And so we want to avoid that and get as close as possible. And the interesting thing about brush painting, when you do that, lines will automatically form and distinguish all the various strokes. It's fascinating. Press down, press down. Okay, and a short stroke there. Let's see, get a little more tone on my brush coming into this area press down, and then shorter, and shorter. Okay, like so. All right, so I've got the second layer here, but I want this to be very fulsome, so I'm going for a third layer, 
and I'm coming in here. Tip is in this V area, press down, and you can you can bounce that brush if you want. Bounce the tip of it. Coming in here, press and bounce the tip. Bounce that tip around. Maybe get a little stroke right in there. Okay. It's coming into view. Again, please notice that each one of these strokes that I'm doing, if you drew a line, they would all connect right there. That's really important to keep in mind. And we have so much fun painting that sometimes we lose our focus and we forget, <laughs> we forget what direction we're supposed to be going in. All right, so again, this, my mind knows there's an invisible line going to here. I point my tip that way and then press and bounce around. Tip in here. All right, and let's see. Now, when you get to about this point, you'll start to think, where do I need to put more strokes? And the thing about the peony, although it does have so many petals, we want them to be in somewhat of a round to oval shape, the overall, but yet you don't want total evenness you see, you want this to go in and out, in and out, like so. All right, so I can see that I would have room here. To, now, can you see that I'm basically doing exactly the same stroke over and over again? So it's not, I don't have to learn a new stroke. It's the same thing. It's landing, and then a low stroke, a low stroke there. And we could maybe get something in here. <laughs> now, what happens is when you start adding and adding, pay attention to when it feels right to you. Because if you paint past that point, you may have to add, say, 10 more strokes to get it back in harmony again. All right. So I'm thinking that we could have something here. Just a little something, maybe something. Okay, now I've yet to do the top part, and that would be the petals that are facing towards us. And so I'm going to take the color I was using and deepen the tip of the brush with some alizarin crimson. I used permanent rose before, so I'm taking a little darker color. You can also tip to indigo and then this time, the tip of the brush, again, is pointed towards that center point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the heel over so that it looks like arms that are embracing that center part. And just tip in. Can you see that little V? That's why I'm going in with a little bounce, bounce, and then drag the tip around, maybe have a little stroke in there. Okay, that's one side. Now we'll get the other side. Into the alizarin crimson again to deepen my tone. Because if we kept the same tone, we couldn't distinguish between the petals that are facing us and the ones that are on the outside, the skirt, the ones. These are all petals that have fallen down. Okay, and so now Tip is here, push out. Tip is here, and drag the tip along, drag the tip along. Okay, now if you'd like, you could even do another layer alongside these. Let's see what that would look like. Okay, so maybe uh, coming in here, tip. And bounce. Here's where the bouncy bouncy comes in. Like so. Okay. So looking it over, I'm very happy with this. I'm thinking uh, perhaps I could get the center more defined. And so you want a deep tone to do that. You want to take your detail brush.
and this is more Western style. Can you see him just going over this just a bit like so? Okay, so there is our flower. Now, not that this would ever happen to you, but sometime we do a flower and we're not exactly thrilled with the way it came out. We aren't too happy with the perimeter of it. We don't think that the shape is exactly right. And it's just fine to do a little detailing with your smaller brush. All right, can you see that I'm enhancing some of these areas? You don't have to go over all of it. But there could be spots where you're thinking, oh, it just, it just needs something more, just a bit more, where I, uh, perhaps you didn't get the shape just the way you wanted to. So a little detailing here and there. And there we have our peony. As many petals as the peony has, it probably has that many stamen, and it's always good to indicate them. You probably could not overdo it. Uh, just do a series of dots and dashes to indicate all the stamen. I use a thick, very creamy white with just a touch of yellow, and then a few leaves to enhance. When you do the stem, if you do a stem, you want to be sure, again, that it meets up with that invisible attachment point, which would be right there. So remember, it's important to do a subject over and over again until you get so familiar with the shape so you know how it's constructed and you can paint rapidly and be in the flow.